Hello, YouTube watchers, it's your boy, Bobblelink here, and welcome back to Let's Play Spyro 2 Ripto's Rage. Today I'm joined by a very special guest. Do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, hello everyone, my name is the Kiwi Dragon. Uh, I am a YouTuber and Twitch streamer. Uh, I cover primarily Crash Bandicoot and uh, Spyro the Dragon. Uh, but I also occasionally dip into other games as well, like Medieval, Sonic the Hedgehog, uh, Super Mario, a lot of other things. So, yeah. Yeah, just a bit of an all-round gamer, really. Just what we like Pretty on much, this channel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was messing around with this um, while I was waiting. It turns out you can actually glide back here. And you do oh, not really? need the double jump to be able to do it. So that's fascinating uh. stuff. And honestly, this whole like castle on this hill in the middle of nowhere, mm -hmm. well, as well as the main castle as well, because this is all on like top of a mountain, presumably, yeah. just fascinates me because it's like you know the architectural chural ingenuity needed to like achieve this is, is immense, you know. Quite a feat of engineering, yeah. Yeah, they would have had to have um, dig considerably into the ground, like, you know, make sure the land can take all this weight. Like, you know, this is just great. And then there's a turret like up there for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> no, especially that one bit there that we're about to go into with uh, Shady Oasis. I mean, that just right there is just standing on its own little cliff. Like, the fact that you, you would have to have got that bridge done that we're, we're standing on right now. Yeah. Uh, before before we even considered building that uh, little, I don't know what you call that little, like, sort of outhouse extension kind of yeah. thing. Yeah, so. sort of like the guest house, you know, like, that's the main castle. Yeah. And, you know, if, if, like, you know, Bentley or Sheila from the other game decide to stay over, this will be their quarters sort of thing. You know, just put down some uh, put down some hay or something for Sheila. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and some, <laughs> <laughs> some yeti food, maybe a fish. I don't know. Although Bentley, I put, put in a couple of freezers, perhaps. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, make it feel like home. Yeah. Exactly. Oh yeah. But anyway, we'll, we'll talk more about those when we get to Spyro Three. I mean, Kiwi may be back. Who knows? We'll see how this goes. But possibly. Yeah. Nah, he'll, he'll be back. He's he's cool. <laughs> he's he's calm. Anyway, onward to Shady Oasis. As I say, I don't remember a huge amount of Shady Oasis. Oh, no, actually, I know, no, I must say it's the one. This one. <laughs> if that's all it took to bulk up, like, you know, Honey, mm. I'd be eating fruit every single day. <laughs> you mean to tell me that fruit has been the cause of my weight gain all this time? You know, yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's why I only eat junk food now. That's the yeah. reason. <laughs> I'm on a KFC only diet, everybody. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, 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 not at all. Yeah. No, but yeah. So, um, you say you don't remember this level too much. No, I, I've suddenly just clued in because for some reason I got this one mixed up with, um, oh gosh, what's the one with uh, Bombo? Oh, Scorch. Scorch. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I was thinking to myself that this was Scorch that we were about to enter and I was like wait hang on no what? Shady Oasis is the other one isn't it yeah. it does give me Scorch vibes because you hear the music and it has some of the riffs from Scorch and yeah. then some are like the kind of building design and like the flooring just it, it sort of feels like it could very much be next to Scorch or like in a similar proximity like if that similar sort of um Oh gosh, what, what what's the way of phrasing it with the the structure of the the building, like architecturally? There's oh, like a temple or something. Like I think that's yeah, that's the no, closest I'm, I'm thing to I can my think. Classics in high school. Pyro, my education. It's a good thing you're here. I've He's very literally named there, Shorty. Bush, but I'm just not strong enough. Okay, cool. If you charge or flame the bush. One of those yummy berries should drop. Bring it on, Shorty. That's all I think of when I read his name now. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Can we take a moment to appreciate that they actually put a fez on top of these poles? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. I love that. 
that's even yeah no yeah. that's a nice little detail I, I'm, you wouldn't think that they put that on like the ps1 version you know particularly because of you know limited polygons that sort of thing yeah but yeah well i think that's sort of what i really love about the spyro games i mean aside mm. from the fact they're just really fun to play because there's a reason you know we keep coming back to them all these years after all Oh, you can actually Absolutely. do that. I didn't even know you could do that. That's crazy. <laughs> okay. I, I think we're meant to get that much later, but okay. <laughs> oh yeah, when you when you come back with the, uh, is it the oh uh, head bash? The head bash, isn't it? Yeah. Or have you already got the head bash? Haven't you? No, we we get that in the um, next level. We have to learn it from money bags oh from money bags in the next home world yeah that's which right. was always yeah. very annoying for me as a kid because you yeah. know if anyone's watched this channel for any length of time they'll know i played year of the dragon first so suddenly starting this game not having the head bash climb or swim is a bit like i don't know felt like a step backwards but obviously it's just because this game came first and i played them out of order so well, see, that, that actually sort of leads into... Remember we were talking earlier on, I said about how my partner's not a huge fan of Spyro 2, but she loves, like, Spyro 1. Yeah. That's actually a big part of it, because she doesn't like the whole backtracking thing. Like, she just likes to get all those levels, like, out, bang them out, done, one, two, three, done. Yeah. Sort of thing. And the fact that she's going to come back to, like, to do a head bash for, like, one level, it's just one of those things. And I always say to her, yeah, but... Spyro 2 is really good, and she's like, yeah, no, but I'm not interested. It's just, you know, you have to backtrack, and that's instantly the moment that I'm like, yeah, I've lost this debate already. Yeah. <laughs> this will have to glide across to this berry bush. Oh, something unique here is I think we only talk to one NPC throughout the entire level. That's like... Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, just trying to remember. Uh, is it... Oh, no, I think there's one more, isn't there? I, I, well, I, I, I feel like there's... Remembering. There's one over there and there's one up there, but I think like, yes. Shorty's the only one we chat to until oh, we get to... Oh, during the course of the level. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, that's definitely what I meant to say yeah. there. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's all right. Yeah. <laughs> no, the only other example I can think of off the top of my head would be um, Bentley. Uh, no, not, not Bentley. Uh, Bartholomew in Bentley's outpost yeah. in Spyro 3. Um... Where's that going? I wonder. It's uh, it's 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 going to the uh, <laughs> lower class. It's the it's the sewage system that just happens to be pouring outside of the uh, front doors of the lower class. <laughs> <So Yes. I don't laughs> it's probably their water source, to be fair, because you know. I mean, I don't know if I call that water because every time you step in it, don't you get damage from it? Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I always assumed it was, like, lava similar to what you'd find in, like, Lost Fleet or something. Um, oh, true, yeah. Yeah, because, again, like, in Lost Fleet, you then get to swim in it when you eventually yeah. get the invincibility power-up, which, um... Do you even get that in this game? I'm not so sure, actually. Yes, you do, I think. Okay. Or am I misremembering? I might be misremembering. I don't know. I don't, I don't think we've spotted it so far, unless it comes no. in, in the final level. Um, which is possible, but yeah. So I've played I think this game I think a lot. It definitely <laughs> appears in the, the final one with Ripto, actually, now that I think about it. Yeah. Either that, or I'm just majorly misremembering, because it's been a couple of months since I last played Spyro 2, so. Yeah. yeah. Is that for like a stream or something? or? Um, I think it was for a stream, actually. Yeah. Oh, nice. Good play. I really love these. Um, like, is that just a full-on genie right there? Like, yeah. Must have a lot of lamps that are dirty in this level. A lot of missing yeah. lamps. Yeah. Little stained glass effect there. Like, this is all really nice. Um. Like, no again, it's it's. It proves just how much they were pushing the the PS1 when you can see you know these stained glass patterns that nowadays you know on, on like for example in Reignited you would take for granted that sort of thing. Oh, absolutely. I feel this is why um like, and a lot of people have said this about these games in particular. There's like a certain charm about them that mm. I just don't think you could really replicate on modern hardware. Because I feel Reignited no. does a good job at remaining sort of faithful to the basic look of these games, but 
There are just some elements where, because it's like being rendered on much more impressive hardware, it almost feels less impressive to look at because it's like not pushing the hardware in the same way these original games were. Um, like not nearly pushing the, the limits of the system to what these were, no. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I've noted as well, like in this game especially, and mm. in the follow-up actually, um, how they really take a step up with the lighting and think about um, not only where it's coming from here, but like where it's coming from up there and stuff like that. Yeah. And it's sort of that sort of thing that, like, I've played it so much, I kind of just don't think about it. I'm like, oh, of course this area of the floor is blue, but it's because of whatever this is. Presumably, like, a light box or something. Presumably. I've always wondered what that was supposed to be. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I, it looks like, if you look at it, it looks like there's some sort of, like, gem in there, or is that just my imagination? No, no, yeah, you're right, like I think. Kind of, yeah. Or maybe Gen, like sort of a in the middle. crystal lamp, I guess. Yeah. I mean, that would make sense given the level we're in, really. Like, I very much get the Aladdin vibes from this. That's what I was say, Aladdin and like yeah. 1001 Arabian Nights kind of thing. Yeah. 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 Arabian... Well, I was about to say Arabian Riptox, but I don't actually think these are Riptox. These are just sort of... No. The level's enemies, really. Um... Something Some kind um, of local hostiles kind of thing. Yeah, exactly. Hitting the bush with one of those lava rocks should work. Oh yes, there are lava rocks back there. When you suddenly play it without double jump, you're like, wait, how am I meant to do this? <laughs> you know, I, I promised, I promised the crowd a genuine experience, and that's what they are getting. The no double jump. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I was always disappointed, and I think this is a bit of a lost opportunity, but like, mm. it's disappointing that you can't eat the apples yourself. Oh yeah. Like, how cool a power-up would that be? Just like, ginormous Spyro, you know? Um, I'm, I'm getting flashbacks to pictures of that um, mod people use in Reignited, actually. Like Which Spyro one? Chungus, where he has like a chunky... Oh yeah. god, yeah. <laughs> I remember seeing that, like... Thanks for helping me reach the Great Berry Bush. Now we can eat berries all the time. Here, take this. It's a gift from all of us hippos. Wouldn't you have the same problem of not being able to reach... Okay, you know what? Let's, let's yeah. not um, <laughs> let's not overanalyze. Let, let's not look into the game's logic too Exactly. Deeply. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, maybe you could shake the trunk, who knows? Yeah, no, as I say, like, they could shake the trunk, but then if that was the case, then why did they need our help to begin with? Yeah. Yeah. No, what I was just saying with the big chunk this morning, no, um, I remember seeing that years ago, and I, I, I said to myself, <laughs> I need to get the um, Reignited Trilogy on PC so I can experience that mod, and what was that, like, 2019 that came out on PC, we're 2022 now, and I'm yeah. still sitting here Spiders. three years later. Three thieves have stolen our magical hey, brass Bruno. lamps. Please get the lamps before they take them away from Shady Oasis. Yes. Was that? Did yeah. You, three, hmm? did, did did you say yes or was that from the game? Oh no, actually, I I read about this. Um, when they recorded the dialogue, sometimes they had like sound from the voice director accidentally still in the game. Wait, really? Yeah. So after Shady Oasis, I heard a little yes, and I was like, was did you say that, Kiwi? Or I. <laughs> I don't know. Do you yeah. want to, is there a, are we able to play it again? Uh, I think so. Um, so the difficulty rating is four out of five stars. I only say that, Kiwi, because my capture window will be covering the star rating. Um, ah. Catch the Wily Thieves. Dr. Wily's Thieves? Yeah. Are you playing Mega Man now? Apparently so. <laughs> I mean, they did say these games took a lot of inspiration. Spyro, three thieves have stolen our magical brass lamps. Please get the lamps before they take them away from Shady Oasis. Did you hear that? Yeah! It's yeah! Like faint talking in the background, yeah! Yeah, and I'm like, who is that? That's I mean, so weird! Part of me wants to do, like, a three-hour video essay on the lore that actually, you know... 
may maybe Ripto was orchestrating this conflict and he was like, you know, behind a magical veil being like, yes, yes. I don't know. But yeah, no, that's just, <laughs> I heard that just now and I was like, did you speak or was that the game? Yeah, no, I'm blown away. Like, I never heard that until now. Yeah. Uh, I think I wouldn't have um, noticed it um, had it not have been for that Twitter thread I saw on it, but still, that was just, yeah, immense. Um, anyway, you were saying something before I went on that tangent, weren't you? Oh, no, I was just saying about um, how it was like three years since the Reignited PC one came out, and I still haven't played that big Chungus mod because I don't even have the game on PC. So. Oh, no. Yeah. I mean, no, it's, it's it's one of those things that I'd love to experience, but it's just like with with, with like mods in that particular sense. But no, yeah. I, just, I keep forgetting to buy Reignited on PC. So yeah, no, I mean that makes sense. Um, I I I when I get to Reignite, you know, I you remember I said you know do they have the invincibility power up? There it is. The, I was saying it's in yeah, this I level. It yeah, it's in this level. Yeah. I just think myself, no, it's not in this level, but there it is, and I'm like, no, I'm like, the memory yeah. just really cheats at this point. Yeah. Well, what it... happens when you have too many hits to the head, boys and girls? Don't <laughs> don't get too many hits to the head when you're a kid. Yeah. That sounds awful. I'm sure we'll hear all about that in a future video from you at some point. <laughs> I don't know if I'll ever divulge that information <laughs> in a video. <laughs> Let's probably. just say, when I was younger, I had one too many concussions, let's yeah. put it that way. Probably too much trauma. Like, li literal trauma. You know, to the pet. Yeah. He gets it. Uh, <laughs> I suppose. I mean, long and short of it is once I got hit on the head with a cricket bat. Let's just put it that way. Yeah. Yeah. Is there a little platform up there? Yes, there actually, is. Can you actually go there? Uh, I think that is where we just came through from where you got that green lava rock to spit at the apple. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So yeah, you can sort of yeah. Use the platform up there to sort of glide down here. You kind of like forget how this all interconnects in a way. But this yeah. is something I really love um, from this game in particular, but like also in the other two games, how kind of like. You see certain platforms and you're like, how on earth do we get there? And then you run around for a bit and then you're like, oh wait, we were down there asking that question earlier, now we're up here, like, you know. Um, this was something else that was like particularly unique to the PS1 games, how they used such Myra, my brother's little have space. Solid rock. Um, I'm afraid you'll need to learn some kind of head bash move creatively. before you can help us. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. Grundy the hippo, some kind of head bash move. It's convenient that wait, he knows exactly what Wait, 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 wait. Grundy the Hippo? Spyro, my brothers have okay. been trapped in salt. Sorry, no, I'm just having right. a moment, because I'm just thinking, because head bash, and I'm just thinking, you know, there was a, um, oh god, what was his name? I can't remember his first name, but he was a TV presenter in the 1970s. His last name was Grundy. Yeah. And, um, Philip Grundy, I think, or... Hmm? Philip Grundy, maybe? or I think it could be. Do you know what? I'm going to quickly Google it for one second. Yeah, uh, sure. Live fact-checking right here on the Bob Wooding YouTube channel. <laughs> uh... Oh, Bill Grundy. That was it. Bill thing. Grundy, right. Yeah. And he had um, an episode of his show that he was doing, and he had the Sex Pistols on. Oh, and legends. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if you've ever seen the interview where you know they start cussing at him. Oh, was that about the, um, what is it, the Jimmy Savile stuff, or? Uh, no. No, that was the Piers Morgan one. No, oh, Bill right, Grundy. Okay. Yeah, no, Bill Grundy was the one where, um, they're like, oh, they call these the, the next generation of punk rockers, and that's what, whatever that means. <laughs> and it's just like, you know, there's this old man interviewing these, you know, punk rock kids. Yeah. And he's he's taken a particular interest in this one girl who's standing with them. Uh, I, I can't remember who her name, but um, long story short, uh, he turns around and like, oh, you know, you, you can come back to the dressing room and meet me later. And it's just like, uh, I think it was... Um, Oh god, not uh, not Sid or um, Johnny Rotten. What's the other one? Steve Jones, who yeah. turns around to me, he's like, "You dirty bastard, you filthy little shit." And it's like, "Oh, that's my absolutely god. a pretty good no, impression." The, 
<laughs> yeah. And it's just suddenly I just remembered like Grundy and it's just like, oh my God. But also the head bash, you know, just sounds a bit like kind of punk rocker. And I was like, wait, were, is that what they were going for there? Or am I just making I connections know. that aren't there, you know? I, it's not outside the realms of possibility. I mean, they did get the drummer of the police of all people to compose the music of these games. Ooh. So, yeah, you know, it's not outside the realms of possibility that they'd have references like that. I mean, if you go to Sergeant Bird's base in Spyro hmm. 3, you have like um, dragons or baby dragons rather named Ryan Lee and Siegfried that are both sort of wartime references and you're sort of like, you know, you definitely wouldn't expect those kinds of references in a, like, children's video game, so... No. But it's ones that, like, as adults, like, once you know what they're referencing, you're sort of like, oh, wow, I kind of feel clever for knowing that. Because, like, yeah. I still have friends who don't know sort of where Siegfried comes from, <laughs> and it's like, yeah, just so cool to know. Thanks for bringing back the three magic lamps. Bruno. Here, take this orb. Some fairy left it with me, but it won't hold a proper shine. Oh, this is like the third reference to the fairies dropping the orbs. Of course, at this point, we know that they scattered the orbs to save them from Ripto. Trouble with me gathering them is all Ripto needs to do is destroy me, then bish bash bosh, he has the orbs again. But <laughs> Exactly. But as I say, with, with the fairies carrying those orbs around, because you see that in, what is it, like that cutscene when they go to... Um, uh, uh, the, uh, what, what is that location? Winter Tundra. Winter Tundra, yeah. 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 Third level. Um, yeah. And um, what I was going to say is that it's you, you see these fairies and it's like carrying these orbs and it's like, surely you guys shouldn't have the strength for that kind of stuff, you know? You're only yeah. just a bit bigger than the orbs themselves. So. Yeah. But then it's the fact but, that yeah. one of them carries the orb with Ripto beneath it. Oh, I'll speak that to the fairy. Just... Hey, Zoe. <laughs> yeah. But no, that is just that that imagery of just the 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 um, the fairy carrying the orb with Ripto yeah. underneath is just oh, it's beautiful. It almost makes me wish they did more of the th the fairies like in these games. Oh yeah, because um, it feels like there was all this kind of. I mean, I don't know exactly what they would do, but it feels like there's kind of opportunity there to sort of expand their role a bit beyond just being checkpoints. Um, I mean, the only game that really I can think of that expands them more than checkpoints is uh, Season of Ice. Oh yes, because they're the main collectibles there, aren't they? Yes, they are, yeah. yeah. Just trying of course, to think. that was actually my first Spyro game, so... Yeah. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah. See, I know, I, I said to a lot of people that Season of Ice was my first game, <laughs> and they looked at, either look at me like, wow, really? Or look at me like... Wow, you must have had a shit childhood. Oh my goodness. <laughs> well, I have my, my friend Chris, who I've mentioned um, to you yeah. before, obviously. Enter the Dragonfly was his quintessential Spyro experience. Oh no! Yeah, and really? literally we all say to him, oh, you poor little thing. But of course he has such fond memories of it. And I'm like, oh, yeah, well, fair enough. It was your childhood. Well, that and like, Wrath of Cortex was his crash game. So like... That was my first crash game, yeah. Yeah. Wrath of Cortex, yeah. I mean, I agree on. Season of Flame, it wasn't like my first Spyro game, but it was my first mm. GBA game, like when I got my oh, first okay. GBA for Christmas, so that was pretty special yeah. to me as well. I mean, in terms of GBA, yeah, no, it was Spyro was one of the first games I got on GBA. It was uh, Spyro, uh, uh, Motor Racer Advance, and there was a, probably another one that I'm misremembering, yeah. but I remember those two. Oh, it was Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets, that's what it was. Oh, yeah. Uh, Connor yeah. David, if you're watching, we have a fellow Harry Potter uh, enthusiast gamer person. Uh, Connor loves the Harry Potter years. series of games. Yeah. I think they actually um, did a race with them recently in GRA. So. Oh, really? Yeah, I think so. Or I might be misremembering. But if I am misremembering, like, yeah, put it in that server. Oh, don't you be misremembering. It's bad enough when I do it. <laughs> Oh, oh, there we both go. of us are doing it. Well, we're two halves of a whole forgetful person. Hey, um, there we go. I think we've gotten everything we can at this point in the game, so I think, I think we so, are safe yeah. to leave. Uh, do you have any final thoughts about this level? 
Um, yeah, no, as I say, it's in terms of like go, just looking back on it, because of course you know I, I play Reignited probably a little bit more because it's more what I have uh, readily. I do actually have you know Spyro One, Two, and Three on my PS3 like digitally. Um, oh, same here. But, like I just I don't go on my PS3 nearly as much as I go on my PS4. So I do play Reignited a lot more. But like looking back on this uh, from the lens of the PS1, it's still brilliantly designed just this whole level like it it really like i said earlier on it pushes the limits of what the ps1 was able to do but also just looking at this whole thing it's like you would not really in, in at least to me anyway believe that this was like what was this 1999 you know yeah you would, you would think that be thinking, oh wow, this actually could hold up well, even in right into the early 2000s. Well, especially when you think about what the library of games was at that point. I mean, exactly. by Crash Bandicoot, I'd argue there wasn't much that was really pushing the limits of the hardware. Um, and there's a reason these games, you know, like captured people the way they did. Like, not yeah. only did they push the limits, though, they they were good and. You know, I mean the music like especially if, as well. Like, mm, yeah. You know. In 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 my opinion, I feel as though Spyro Baps even probably pushed the hardware even more so than Crash. The only one I can really think of that really like pushed the limits, perhaps with Crash any further than Spyro did, was probably CTR. Yeah, I think I'd agree with that assessment. Um, I can't say because, I've played CTR yeah. myself, but like, you oh know, really? Yeah, no, it's surprising. Like, um, in fact, we'll exit the level and I'll get more onto yeah. my experiences with Crash. Oh. Go through the other side, yeah. Greedy bastard, I can relate. <laughs> oh. But you gotta wonder, it's just like they're, they're you know, looking at the tree and it's just like, well, hang on a minute. How did you get it then? If you two are looking at this thing. Well done, oh, Spyro. Oh. Now that you have all fourteen talisman, your guidebook can break the lock on the door and you can fight Gulp. Are you ready? Uh, I wanna see what happens if I say no, because I've had this question before, yeah. so Okay. Come back whenever you're ready. Oh. Oh, and she doesn't even open the door. I see. Well no. done, Spyro. Now that you have... Uh, I see. You'll have to jump down the hole in the floor to get to where Ripto and Gulp are waiting. I can help you out a little bit. I tamed a few pterodactyls from Skelos Badlands. They'll be dropping objects that you can use to fight Gulp. How can we never see Alora do any of this cool stuff, like... She, I know. She only shows up in the home worlds and it's sort of like, Spyro, I'm doing a lot all this damage control. And it's like, can we see you in a few challenges maybe? Like, this would be cool to see. Like, you know, if in yeah. Skelos Badlands there was a task where we tamed some pterodactyls or something, like, that would be cool. Because um, I presume you're familiar with the cut content from this game, are you? Um, well, I'm, I'm familiar there was... Uh, there was like some narration over the cutscenes I'm aware of. Yeah, from Alora, and I, I think that would have actually added some nice depth to be like, oh yeah, she's been here obviously because she knows all about these places. But it's just like instead we just have the cutscenes. So yeah, speedway time. Exactly, everyone's favorite level apparently. Oh uh, <laughs> yeah, we talked about this earlier. <laughs> <laughs> it's my favorite level, but well, well. Not not this one in particular, but I mean, oh no. Yeah. But I mean, like you know, I like the speedways in general. Oh yeah. Although this like, one. What can... is your favorite speedway from this level? Uh, from this game. Um... Actually, from this game, not from this level. Yeah, that, that made no sense. Um, I reckon probably. Uh, I want to say either Metro or Ocean. I think. Yeah, I'd I'd go with Metro as well, actually. Yeah. Because I think Metro just has, like, such a cool, you know, downtown vibe about it. You know, I've always 
when I grew up, I always had like those toy car carpets. You know, like those oh, little yeah. fake towns, and it's like, oh, yeah. I want to live in that town, sort of thing. <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't know. I just, I, I have a soft spot for like those kinds of levels. Do you want to I mean, I, I, I grew up, a, you know, a lot, of, um, like close to the city, and then you know, before I moved over here, you know, where I moved to essentially the middle of nowhere on a farm, you know, that that sort of thing. Seeing all these kind of. Uh, buildings around just kind of a bit homely, I suppose. Oh, shoot, sense. I forgot to do the hunt challenge. Oops. Uh oh. <laughs> it's all right, we'll go back in. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so no, it's it just kind of homely. Oh, but... Laura, well, we've done this Hello. before. <laughs> we've done this before, Hello, Laura. Laura. Laura, darling, just, just be patient. Yes. I, I, I will take care of Gulp for you. Um, that sounds very strange outside of context, but there we go. Yeah. <laughs> Just a little bit. Yeah. Uh... Um, oh, I mean, I guess we're adding length to the video, I suppose. Um, Indeed. Yeah. Um, yeah, sorry. Well, actually, let's listen to Hunter, then we'll... Good job, Spyro. Looks like you're ready for a more serious challenge. How about a little paragliding? You're not afraid of heights, are you? Well, seeing as, you know, I can fly and I'm a dragon, I hope Great. I wouldn't. <laughs> I'll tow you behind my I mean, snowmobile be and you maneuver through the, the uh, rings. Don't miss any or we'll have to start over. Yep, it'd, be, it'd be quite the uh, paradox if uh, Spyro has wings and he can fly, in, but he's actually afraid of heights. Yeah. Like, that would yeah. be an interesting, like, if they were to introduce a dragon with a fear of heights, though, that would be an interesting plot device, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. So difficulty There's a rate... new uh, movie there, Pixar, a dragon yeah. who's afraid of flying. There we go. Yes. Pete Doctor, team, get on that. Um, difficulty is four out of five stars. I love that they give us these little descriptions in green writing in case we didn't figure it out, but fly through yeah. rings is our brief. So, yeah, I can do game. <laughs> well, in theory, sometimes I fail the challenge. I was say, I always like this one, actually. Probably more yeah. so than the actual speedway, to be honest. Yeah. I feel this is probably the messiest speedway of the game, I think. Yeah, absolutely. I always have, like, a soft spot for water levels, though. Um, and... Ah... Oh okay. no! I let go a bit early. Hey, I heard yeah. you were good at this flying stuff. Oh well, wanna go for it again? That was a little bit um, uncalled for, uncalled Hunter. Uncalled for? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Let's go. Let's go. Okay. Yeah, that's just no, a little I, bit I like passive, water aggressive, levels. and back. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Sorry, go. <laughs> Oh no, I was just saying, I, 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 you, you were saying about water levels before, I'm, I'm quite fond of some water levels, but some water levels I'm also like, Ugh. you know, yeah. I'm, I'm not huge on Aquaria Towers, to be honest. Really? Yeah, that it's one of those levels that I always me. just don't like, really. Yeah. I mean, fair enough, I guess. Um, I think, um, and when I had Lucas and Casey on the other day, um, they were saying, well, I guess a time like this going out will be a few weeks ago, but they were saying how um, they reckon its purpose was to, like, start introducing people to the swimming mechanic. Way to go, Spyro! Yeah. You're even better than I am! Well, seeing as I can fly and you can't, I'd hope so. Mm. <laughs> I was say, last I checked, cheetahs don't have wings, so, yeah, yeah it'd be quite surprising <laughs> if you were better at flying than Spyro. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, I suppose technically as like those clip on wings that you use as an ocean speedway. So I guess oh, maybe true. maybe there yeah. is some merit to him saying that, but still, it's just weird. Yeah. yeah, let's have a bit of an explore now that we've done the speedway. Anyway, so like actually, there was something I was going to mention. Is you said earlier on about um, you never played CTR. Do you want to expand a bit on that? Yes, sure. Um, so essentially, um, and this is where it gets probably a bit controversial. My mm -hmm. introduction to Crash Bandicoot was Crash Bash. So oh. I had no idea about the existence of the original trilogy or CTR. 
Um, and it was because of Crash Bash that I found out about Spyro 3 and then vice versa. The rest is history. So oh, like the demo in the game? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So like, um, and I might do a story time video about that someday, actually, where I like play the demo and I talk a bit more about it. But yeah, so essentially like my quintessential Crash experiences were like, um, I played Crash Bash, my brothers then got Wrath of Cortex, so I got to experience that. My brother got um, Twin Sanity, so I played that. The game I got for my birthday when I was when I turned eight was Crash Tag Team Racing, and I only recently managed to complete that to 100%. I was disappointed to learn there was no um, spoilers, by the way, that there was no like sort of secret ending or whatever no. which I think would have been nice given you know All they the they do such a good in. job putting that story together yeah exactly Yeah. but you know it was still nice to finally be able to say hey I've beaten this game <laughs> so your um, first one was Crash Bash that's interesting yeah so it's weird to me when I hear people say that you know they don't sort of think of it as a proper crash game because to me it was my first taste of what a crash game is. But I, I mean, feel I still think of it as a proper, well, not not necessarily a proper crash game. Because I mean, when you say proper crash game, that it to me is when I think of just the regular series. So we're like, you know, we're talking one, two, three, Ramp Cortex, uh, uh, Twin Sanity, Minor Mutants, and oh, yeah. Titans as you also mentioned as well, and then now also Crash Four. Uh, but in that same vein, um, I, I can see why people would also be uh, including the likes of like CTR in there because we had three of those. But whereas with like party games of Crash, we only had two being Bash and uh, <laughs> Boom Bang. But let's not talk yeah. about that one. <laughs> <laughs> but no, Bash is uh, like to me personally. Um, when I look back on my childhood, so obviously my first Crash game was uh, Rafa Cortex. And then I got. Um... Oh no, it wasn't. Sorry, no. My first one was CTR. Yeah, CTR ninety nine. Yeah, exactly. There we go. Yeah, uh, I had that on. I still ha um, have. Oh no, do I still have it on disc? Or I had it on disc at one point. Anyway, I think I might have sold it a couple of years ago because I was in a bad spot. Um, but anyway, uh, yeah, yeah. So that was my first one, and then yeah, Wrath of Cortex was my second, followed by. Um... Oh, my sister got because uh, we we both got uh, Game Boy games over one Christmas. I don't know which Christmas it was, but um, she got the Crash and Spyro Super Pack. I think it was the Volume One. I think is the blue one. Yeah. Um, and it was Spyro Season of Ice, which I already had a copy of from when I first got a GBA. Uh, and uh, on the other part of it was Crash 2 Entranced, which I absolutely adore that game. And I yeah. know a lot of people turn around and they're like, oh, I've never played that game before. And I'm like, you need to go play it. It's so good. Yeah. I love that game. I will sing its praises till I die because yeah. it is that good. It, it, it shouldn't work putting Crash in a 2D format, especially on the Game Boy but it works so well yeah. uh, and the level design is just really clever what well, i mean uh, it is bosses just... are actually quite fun too so what well, i mean if you look at crash bandicoot at its core it was taking that like classic 2d style and making it 3d so yeah i see no reason why it wouldn't work in that 2d side scroller like format you know no, that's true. I suppose it's more because, you know, people are so familiar with that 3D aspect of uh, Crash that they're all like, well, the whole idea of Crash was that he was the, the Sonic's ass game. Yeah. If you know that one, yeah. <laughs> I've uh, heard that but, one. So, yeah. But no, it's like, um, yeah, at the same Let time. Let me guess. I, I, yeah, Alora. Oh, <laughs> oh, so impatient, Alora. I know. We're having a conversation. Learn to wait. We are. Yeah, <laughs> but no, as I say, um, a lot of people I speak to are like, we'll oh, you know, you wouldn't think Crash on the Game Boy Advance would be Golden good. Wing. And I'm like, no, I it's that. It is really good. So, like, yeah. don't play it. If, you, if you're watching out there and you haven't tried Entrance, go try it. It's yeah. You can probably get it somewhere on the internet from some site. I'm not saying where, but <laughs> it's, it's very easy to get hold of and it's very fun. 
Um, and From then the two other... Crash Pros right here, yeah, try it out. Yeah. <laughs> the other Crash games then that I had uh, mostly experience with in childhood was then Bash, because I used to borrow that off my cousin, like, a lot, because I love that game. Based. Um, and I, I know a lot of people... And, and this is the thing, I know we're at the point with Crash where it's like, um, hey, we probably don't need any more remakes, we should probably focus on new games, but, like, I can understand when people say, oh, I really want to see Crash Bash remake, like, Part of me sitting here like, yeah, from from a financial perspective, it doesn't make sense because the game didn't sell well back in 2000, so it just yeah. it doesn't really make Plus, sense. Plus, it was a very but small game as well compared to very like, true. the others. Yeah, but at the same time, I can kind of see why people would like a remaster or a remake. You know, some something in like a a nitro fueled style uh, version of. Uh, Crash Bash, where you, you have like expanded roster, perhaps, and more to do. Um, I think would be quite interesting. But then also yeah. the other one that uh, I played a lot in my childhood. I used to go around my mate Kieran's house, and he used to have Crash Nitro Kart, and I just remember just playing that with him a lot. So, yeah, yeah. Fair play, fair play. I will so definitely those were like um... five that probably like shaped my Crash enthusiasm. Yeah. And I know and a lot of people be like, wait, there's no original trilogy in there? Like, are you crazy? It's yeah. like, no, I didn't grow up with the original trilogy. Well, I mean, so. that's the thing. It's like, and it's the same with Spyro as well, actually. Like, mm. I start to realize, you know, not everyone had a PlayStation 1 growing up, so not everyone experienced no. the original trilogy. And I think that's why when I get people saying, you know, oh, I grew up with A Hero's Tale or like the GBA games or whatever, I'm like... Who am I to sort of gatekeep what they should and shouldn't enjoy in Spyro? Um, like, and I, for the longest time with Spyro, like I said, the only one I played was Season of Ice. So yeah, uh, I the only experiences I had uh, w with um, like these games, the original trilogy, and then uh, with End of the Dragon was playing them with at my cousin's place uh, because he would play them with me like i why well, i say play them with me i'd watch him play sort of thing yeah <laughs> and i would just sit there being like wow this is so cool this is so amazing and i'm just like when the hell's my turn and I'm just yeah like, no, no. <laughs> you know because it was his cult so it was his house i wasn't gonna make a big deal out of it well, at I mean, the same that, time yeah yeah <laughs> Well, that's the thing but with no, me and like, Spyro 3. Like, it was my brother's game, really, because he asked for it for Christmas, but I feel I loved it more. So. <laughs> yeah. Well, that yeah. was the same thing with Entranced with, with, um, on that multi-pack with my sister, because my sister, you know, she likes Spyro. Uh, I don't know if she was a huge on Crash, but I know she liked Spyro. Uh, at least, it, when I say she liked Spyro, she liked Spyro's design more than yeah. anything. Like, she's, she's very into, like, the cute, cuddly kind of mascots sort of thing. Like, for example, she she's never really played many Crash or Spyro games. And I remember, like, if, if, if you want a really good example of it, she once I once went to one of the local Comic-Con kind of conventions that we have down here in New Zealand. It's called Armageddon. And um, she said to me, she said, hey, she said, if you see, um, I, I want a particular plushie. And I'm like, yeah. And she's like, if you see it, can you get it for me? And I'm like, okay, sure. What's the plushie? She's like... <laughs> Oh, I want a plushie of uh, Totoro from My Neighbor Totoro. And I'm like, have uh, you even seen My Neighbor Totoro? And she's like, no, but I think he's adorable. And I'm like, you know what? I'm not I'm not even going to try and judge you because you, you, you have it on point. <laughs> Totoro is adorable, but... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm also sitting here like, why? Why Watch have you the not film seen this least. film? Yeah. Like, Studio Ghibli stuff is just so good. Oh, I love Studio Ghibli. Nino Kuni... Honestly, mm. if there's one game other than Spyro or Crash that I think anyone should try out at least once in their life, Nino Kuni, Wrath of White Witch, available on PS4, PC, Nintendo Switch, PS3, because it was originally a PS3 game, and Nintendo DS, interestingly, even though yeah. I couldn't... It was such a massive game that I'm sort of like, how did this work on DS? But of course it was on DS first in Japan, but... Yeah. yeah. Anyway, should we um return to the gameplay? <laughs> we shall. We shall. I, I, I really enjoyed this little like break from the like the podcast star chat we had going on there. Um, should definitely think about starting a podcast someday. It's like the one I, creative I've honestly thing I've thought not... about doing a podcast, but I was always thinking, man, I don't know if I if I could really 
pull it off. But now I'm sitting there thinking, we've been talking since, what is it, 9.20 in the morning, my time. It's now 12.06. Yeah. Well, it was 10 uh, p.m. Like, my yeah. time, and it's now 6 past 1 a.m. This is another reason you remind me of my friend Chris as well, because this is literally me and him, like, we'll just chat for hours. Um, yeah. Don't even get me started on SpongeBob, or we'll still... It, it will be like daytime and I'll have to go to work and we'll still be uh, chatting. I would, but I haven't seen Spongebob in years. Oh, really? Yeah. You know, maybe, maybe I used to watch love party. watching uh, uh, Spongebob on, um, when, I, when I grew up in the UK. I was watching Spongebob all the time on um, Nickelodeon when we had... Uh, oh, God, oh. what was it? Uh, a Virgin uh, media box? We have Virgin, yeah. Yeah. Oh. But um, no, as I say, I, 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 I do miss watching... Uh, Nickelodeon and that sort of thing. I, I've, I've got to look at yeah. maybe getting a Skybox because we don't have Virgin, obviously, here, but we do have Sky. So yeah, I mean, it's it. Yeah, it's a way to see it, but yeah, yeah. Um, what I love about this level we're about to go to is it's called Gulp's Overlook, but we're going hmm. down a hole, like into a dungeon. So yeah, really, like... I I know they called the uh, the last one Crush's Dungeon, but I feel Dungeon would be a more appropriate name here as well. Like, you know, it's it's not like you like what's the word? It's not like you can't use a word more than once, you know. No, absolutely. Anyway, into the hole we go. We. I suppose it's less of a uh, OCD thing, or sort of more of an OCD thing, not to use multiple We've names. Finally made Avalar ours. <laughs> You've earned a special reward. Now, go. What is it, boy? Oh, the fairy. Here you go. <laughs> you singed my cape, dragon. You are really starting to get on my nerves. Say goodbye, flame brim. Go. Lunch time. Go. Finish him off and you can have all the fairies you can eat. I'm going to enjoy this. Two things disturb me about that. Like, isn't Crush hmm. a fairy? Um, um, like, in the canon, I think Crush is meant to be a fairy, so it's like... Really? Yeah. Uh. I think that's the joke, you know, because he has, like, tiny wings on his back. Um, I mean, I might be misquoting that. But secondly, um, isn't Zoe stronger than Ripto? Or is she uh, maybe just a pacifist? Who knows? I mean, um, it, it's entirely possible that fairies would be pacifists. Yeah, you wouldn't yeah. think of them as being violent creatures, after all. Oh, there is that hole up there. I guess, going back to the name of this level, maybe the Overlook part makes sense, because that castle's, like, so high on a cliff that maybe even this being the ground floor is still, like, an Overlook of the valley. Yeah, um, that's true. Who normally sits on that throne, though, unless Ripto had it built? Probably had it built. I'm gonna presume he had it built. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I do. Because like... it'd be weird just to have this sort of like dungeon kind of area, and it's like, oh, there's a throne there, unless of course whoever rules Avalar is really into gladiatorial combat, for chance. Yeah, exactly. Oh, I love that word, gladiatorial. <laughs> oh, did he just eat my life source? I think he did. Yeah. <sighs> That's not very nice. I love that Ripto's just sat there like, go on, destroy him, gulp, and it's like, I'm pretty sure you're the like, one who has beef with me, dude, like... Yeah. It's like, you know, Crush and Gulp never really had beef with us at all, but it's just like... Also, if Ripto wanted to make it so much easier, he could just sit there and just grab his scepter and just, you know, start, you know, trying to go after Spyro, but he's, he's, he's just sit, sitting there and being like, you know what? I'm yeah. just gonna let you know, my henchmen do it. It's like that sort of trope with villains, it's just like, you know, why don't you all get involved? You know, like yeah. multiple Team of up. you on one. Oh. Yeah. Collectivist attitude, mate. Exactly, um, but it's just like, no, divide and conquer is apparently more effective. Okay. Oh, well, I ain't getting that skill point. 
No. <laughs> I've already died once. It's going to be interesting to see how many attempts this takes me, because I've heard from many people that this is, like, the hardest boss fight. Yeah, yeah, as I say, I've heard people say that they think it's the most difficult one. I would have to go back and play it again on PS1 for yeah. me to truly judge, yeah. I would have said um, Spike in Spyro 3, but I guess maybe Ooh. that's like... Yeah. Even if it's not harder, it definitely equalizes this one in terms of difficulty, in my definitely. view. Yeah. Yeah. No, as I say, I'm trying to think if there's any other like boss fights that I can think of that are particularly like difficult um, in this series. I, I, unfortunately, as much as I love Spyro One, I'm gonna say none of them from there are particularly oh. difficult. <laughs> no, no. Uh, sorry, Katie, no. if you're watching this, but yeah. <laughs> Well, actually, unless you agree, yeah. I had a lot of trouble when I first played the original Spyro with. Um, uh, oh, he's like, "Don't harm my master." <laughs> <laughs> I had a lot of trouble with um, Nasty when I first played Spyro One yeah. with that last little platforming segment. Where yeah, I was gonna say like. Going to the wall. Yeah. I feel any challenge with the bosses is less to do with like the skills of the boss and more to do with the challenging platforming involved in getting the hits in the first place absolutely yeah like this this game definitely puts more focus and emphasis on those like you know Oof. harder yeah. big threat type things okay yeah no, I, just, I don't i don't know if i can really think of many other difficult bosses um even like in uh, Enter Dragonfly Ripto there is not that bad. No. I mean, he's much yeah. easier there than he is here. How did that not kill me? I have <laughs> no idea. Sometimes, like... Sometimes things happen that even... you for not dying. <laughs> yeah, even I'm like, that really should have killed me, but I'm really glad it did <laughs> sort of thing. The one, one good thing about... Uh, see, if, he, if, if this was reignited, he'd probably have squashed you, but the, the one good thing about uh, these older games that perhaps have a different hitbox, maybe... Yeah. Uh, ...is just like, nah, didn't hit you, you're good, carry on. They definitely have a much different lock-on system, because I seem to recall... Absolutely. And it's been a while since I've played it, but... Um, Crush in Reignited is tons harder, because... You know, he actually waits for you to stop charging before he takes his hit. So you've sort of got yeah. to, like, stop charging like this and then charge again. So it's, like, encouraging you to make more use of the inputs and the movement scheme. Yeah. And, of sure. course, there you don't have a double jump to rely on. No. Um, of course, here I'm trying to do it without a double jump. And, yeah, it's variable results. I mean... We've not done this without getting hit, but actually, like, this is not doing too badly in this attempt. I mean, we haven't wasted tons of lives, so it's it's yeah. gone well in one respect, at least. Well, I mean, I have 40 lives, I think, or 40 yeah. odd lives, so it's like, you know, I, I, I don't think I'll be getting game over anytime soon. No. You know? Right. Come on, then. Crush me, daddy. <laughs> right, come on. Here we go. Yeah, we'll, we'll get that skill there point we later. Go. <laughs> Lovey does that sort of little dance almost like before he dies. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, it's very theatrical. Well, clearly that uh, throne was not fixed properly. Spyro, you did it! Whoa! Alora, where'd you come from? I was just outside the castle in Autumn Plains. The castle is now free again! There's no sign of Ripto. And since you've been around, the creatures of Avalar are finally starting to get along. Since you've done so much for Avalar, and since I know you really miss being on vacation, we really wanted to do something nice for you. It's not much, but we hope you like it. Wow, this is great. Aren't you going to join me? Uh, no. I'd like to, but I've got to go check on the professor in the winter tundra. He's still trying to fix the super portal so he can send you home. Oh, 
That sounds interesting. I think I'll just hang out here for a while and soak up a few rays. Hey, where did Laura go? I better follow her. Oh my goodness, simp. Um... <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> Never did I, I think, think I'd hear of Spyro simply to access Laura. the Dragon Worlds from the Super Portal. This power crystal should give us the extra boost that we need. Just a few more calculations to set it up. I think I have it. Excellent! Everything is finally ready. We're going to need a lot more orbs, but with the power crystal boosting it, the Super Portal should work again. of me. Well, I'm afraid not. I persuaded that fat bear money bags to sell me a few bomb. Quick, the power crystal. Don't even try it, book boy, or you'll be the world's smartest pile of ashes. <laughs> this is just what I need for a new scepter. Hunter, do something quick. Uh, hey, give that back. Well, I tried. <laughs> you little fools! After I destroy you all with my new scepter, I'm going to rename this place Riptonia! <laughs> well, um... First off, how on earth did he survive that fall? Yes. Like, literally, that just fell off the cliff, and, like, he fell with it, and it's just like, how did that he happen? He should have several broken bones, and... Like, honestly, I feel you could make a yeah. whole spin-off game just from the point of view of Ripto getting back to Winter Tundra. Like, honestly, that... Yeah. <laughs> Probably. That made but no I was just sense thinking... <laughs> I was just thinking, I said earlier on about like why Ripto didn't join into the boss fight, and I was just like, oh yeah, because he only gets a scepter now, doesn't he? Because he only gets the, um, the, 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 oh, the, what is it? The power gem. The, no, power, the power crystal. Gem. Power crystal, that's yeah. it. Power crystal. He only gets the power crystal. I know you're confused because you're now. probably used to hearing that in Crash, but. <laughs> yeah. No, that's what I was thinking. I was like, no, it's not power yeah. crystal, that's Crash. Oh, no, it is. No, it is also Spyro, and then it's also the gems yeah. as well. And it's like, ah! Uh... Well, what? All I can say is I hope whoever was in charge of quality control on that throne got a very hefty lawsuit. Um, <laughs> but yeah, anyway, that was uh, part, I think. Unless there's anything else you wanted to say, any observations I've missed? Um, no, as I say, I, th I think in terms of observations, as I say, uh, this game just really still... I mean, I, I don't think I even really need to say this, but still holds up uh, very well, even in what what are we, 2022? This is what, like... Yeah. How many years after 1999? I, I, like, th it's 23? I'm That's terrifying. <laughs> is, oh, my God, is it 23? Yeah. God. 23 years. Yeah, that, that is terrifying, yeah. yeah. I feel I know, weird being... Like, it's the 25th anniversary next year, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Um... Where we will hopefully get some kind of announcement, possibly. Um, hopefully. Toys for Bob, Activision, Microsoft, anyone, if you're watching this, please just give us a new game. We want something. Give us please. something. You know, give us Heck, a sound even point. If you're, if you're the ones that could work on it, we, we, we'd be keen to see yeah, some Beanox action. You know, this is actually what Alora's thinking. When is Spyro 4 coming? You know. He's just... It's just Alora just turning her head and looking around, just be like, it's Alora looking for Spyro 4. Exactly. She doesn't see it on the horizon, <laughs> and that's worrying. <laughs> oh no, please not. <laughs> but no, hopefully soon we'll hear something, I would yeah. like to think. But yeah, in, in terms of this game, though, just going back to thoughts and that sort of thing. No, it, it still holds up very well. Um, looks great you know like i said 23 years later as i said earlier on in shady oasis uh this is you know a game that even in the early 2000s still held up relatively well in comparison to stuff that was on like the early days of the ps2 particularly when you look at stuff like um 
even like Enter the Dragon fight, which I know it's probably a bad comparison, but yeah, you know, yeah. <laughs> At the same time, you could you could see that there's like not a huge, tremendous leap from the Spyro of like the trilogy of to the Spyro of Enter the Dragon fight. It, yeah, it, there's there's certainly more definition in the in the latter in the um in the uh enter the dragonfly to like his model but yeah at the same time it still holds up very well and there's definitely yeah. like more range and texture at play here as well um absolutely especially this like whole mechanic of you know the further away you are the blurrier it gets which you know is sort of like how you picture real life anyway but it just works and it's amazing and i love it i mean that's that's also the draw distance, you know, for the console as well, just so it's not loading in everything and like having to absolutely massively like chug at the frame rate and just seeing it, this whole castle like yeah. loading in with massive detail in the background. So yeah, yeah. well, exactly. But it's like you sort of you, you don't think about that necessarily. Like even now that I'm turning no. the camera, you see a few more details, but it's all sort of like you know. It just works seamlessly, and like it's yeah. very minuscule detail from what you when you see when you turn that camera. Yeah, exactly, one hundred percent. Which is in, in reality, you know, you, you know, you could have um, the the argument to say, yeah, well, actually, the draw distance, you know, it, it, it makes it look actually further away than it actually is. You know, I suppose. Yeah, absolutely. And again, it's just how they work with space and whatever to just creatively give us that sense that this isn't only a video game but this could be a real world in some exactly ways. and we know it's not a yeah. real world and everything like you know no. <laughs> hopefully we're not that <laughs> gullible but like you know it, it feels real and it feels lived in and you know, exactly just what i love about these games it feels like it's inhabited by you know not just you know Alora and hunter and whoever else or oh, the professor is here as well yeah <laughs> um but like it feels like outside of you playing this game, like you can imagine in your head that there's actually like citizens of like Avalar walking around in these kind of areas, like in, exactly. in, not just here in Winter Tundra, but also in Autumn Plains and yeah, everywhere. And else. in some ways, that's the one thing I wish they did more of in this game, really. And oh, like I'll get NPCs. to this. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll get to this more when I get to my review. But like the denizens of the world cohabiting yeah. these homeworld areas as well oh, um so cool i mean it's something you sort of see in the next game but like you know again if you're listening whoever's official like you know just food for we thought. want some npcs exactly <laughs> more npcs more npcs yeah i agree on that one anyway as much as i've enjoyed this discussion um mm. we're at over an hour now so i think it's probably we a are. good time to wrap up um, thank you very much to the Kiwi Dragon. I really enjoyed having you on for this part. Um, thank you for having me. Yeah, and we'll hopefully, definitely, probably see more of you in future content real soon. I'd like to think so, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, is there uh, anything you want to link for the viewers to check out? or? Um, so, if, if anybody would like to come over and have a look at the stuff I do, so you can uh, have a look at my YouTube channel. Uh, have some videos in the works at the moment. Uh, just did one not too recently, a little meme format uh, with uh, Michael Rosen, if anybody's familiar with that sort of uh, meme format. Uh, I also have my Twitch uh, as well. That um, do, do I need to say the links while, while I'm here? or? Uh, well, you, you can just say what it is. I'll put all the links in the oh, okay. description. Cool, yeah. cool. Uh, yeah, so you can pop over to yeah YouTube and then my Twitch as well. I stream there. I try to stream about four times a week, but at the moment it's usually about a minimum of two. Um, so usually it's on uh, Saturdays and Sundays are usually the guaranteed ones, uh, or at least Saturday, Sundays, uh, my time. Uh, and then Fridays and Saturday, uh, Fridays and Thursdays are uh, ones if I also do uh, like a four stream during the week. Uh, typically try to play. Um, some solo stuff so like at the moment i've just uh back almost back to complete uh stray for ps4 um what a tile. then yeah i love that game it's beautiful uh we so just about to complete that i also do some fall guys on there as well so i try to invite as many people as i can to come in and play fall guys like on stream with me um uh, usually have a uh, discord call open to have uh, people so they can actually communicate on stream 
uh, and also some uh, Jackbox. We've also just looked into some Goose Goose Duck as well, which is like a nice little social deduction game, very similar to Among Us, but uh, has roles which are more similar to um, another social deduction game called uh, Town of Salem. So it's like combining the best of those two games. And then, of course, there's the old Crash and Spyro. Uh, I do intend to actually do a Spyro-thon at some point. Uh, basically going through and completing every Spyro game on a certain day of the stream week back to back to back to back to back to back. To back. So, Similar to what yeah. I'm doing over here, but just in stream format. So exactly. if you want to experience yeah. it a bit quicker, go over there. And also, if you join his um, Discord... Kiwi's very oh, yes. good at updating you for when he's doing streams, whenever anything is going on. I'm on there. It's a great place to chill, hang out. Great community. So yeah, yeah. Join him great on place to, Twitch. Um... Huge. Yeah, go on, sir. Oh no, I was just saying, just great place to come and hang out, make some new friends. Yeah. Uh, plenty of places to promote your work. So if you're a, if you're a person who makes YouTube videos, uh, you can join in and uh, post your videos there. If you're a Twitch streamer, you can put your Twitch streams there that sort of thing yeah exactly and he's also over on twitter if you dare use that site oh yeah yeah of course <laughs> i totally forgot i was on twitter <laughs> it's, it's weird i yes. i know your social media better than you do so yeah I, I know yeah <laughs> yeah you can follow me at the kiwi dragon i post um i i post things just that that's the basic way i can put it i, I post uh yeah. sometimes a lot of uh, discussion related sort of things where I try to get as many people in like the community as possible both in the Crash and Spyro communities to try and have their say on what they think uh, about certain things uh, also just post sometimes uh, about other stuff so occasionally the odd uh, wrestling kind of tweet, the odd Formula 1 kind of tweet and yeah. occasionally some Doctor Who tweets as well and you can also if you're interested in music you can also follow the second account I run which is Crash Music Daily uh, I post also in the Crash description music also in the description yep. uh, <laughs> you can uh, you can see me posting there at Crash Music uh, supposed to be daily admittedly I had a break over the past few days I had to deal with some family stuff but I posted last night we just posted at the time of me recording which will be a couple of weeks when this airs uh, we just posted I think it was Cortex Castle last night and that's seemingly getting a lot of good reactions from people who are fondly remembering their playthrough of uh, Crash 4 so yeah nice one well, that, that was a lot, but you know what? Yes. It's good, it's good to see someone active, you know? It's great. It's good to be thorough, yeah. Exactly. You know, know exactly where to find you, what you're doing. But yeah. Exactly. Um, follow Kiwi Dragon. He's amazing. Awesome friend. Great guy. Can't fault him. And thank you, thank you very much, guys, <laughs> for watching. Thank you to Kiwi Dragon again. You know, the legend himself is here. Kiwi Dragon. Uh, I think they get the picture. I'm embarrassed now, legend. <laughs> <laughs> well, it'll be a good time to wrap up the video. <laughs> Indeed. Thank you very much for watching. Bobble Dink out.